yeah, that shreds pretty good. I have this toggle switch here, and I set up through Joystick Gremlin. Invert weapon groups. To invert the weapon groups. Maybe we can get him to impact. Yep. Okay, so they do work. They do disable. Because it's it's DPS on paper, and then there's applied DPS. Because That shreds pretty quickly. So, yeah, you can see here, we're like 12 kilometers out. That gives us plenty of time to decide whether or not we want to enable or disable the weapon group for the Gatling. And let's turn it back off. Yeah, in, in that one burst, we actually already disabled that hurricane. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe keeping a couple of these distortions on when you're doing these atmospheric bounties is just fantastic. Yeah, that seems to be the way to deal with hurricanes, isn't it? As the weapon is enabled and disabled. Showing how the velocity of the weapons affects the aim point. Yeah, we're burning ammo real, really too fast because we don't really have any other options but to burn ammo. Uh, today, we are going to look at some loadouts for the Vanguard. I've previously had that as a requested topic. I've had some thoughts on it for a while. And I think we're going to try to dive into that. I don't think we're going to do everything in every possible combination. But I think I'm going to touch on the ones that I think work really good. Maybe a couple of the weird oddities, and a little bit on the weapon management stuff for the Vanguard specifically. And it kind of applies to other ships too, but given the way the Vanguard has that cluster of size 2s and the size 5 mount on the front, uh, I think the Vanguard definitely benefits what, what we're going to look at there. So there's probably going to be a lot of, a lot of explosions. I am going to show you something cool that I that I did, but uh, yeah, we just, we still need some key bindings. Anyway, um, so AD5B size five ballistic Gatling, 700 meters per second, plus GVSRs, laser repeaters on the nose. They're not as efficient as the cannons. They sit somewhere between a size 2 and a size 3 in terms of their overall capabilities. One nice thing about energy weapons on the Vanguard is they have the reset time of a size 2, but they have higher damage output than size 2, especially when you get into the MVSA cannons. They hit basically like, well, they have the DPS of size 3 cannons, but they have the reset time of size 2 cannons, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, 1400 meter per second velocity on that cluster of guns on the nose and 700 meter per second velocity on the AD-5B. And we're picking that specifically here to look at weapon management on the Vanguard for starters. I'm also going to talk a little bit about how I've got the keybind set up on the joystick. These are things that I've kind of covered other places before, but I'm just going to do it to kind of refresh everything. And yeah, we'll, we'll just look at it as a whole package and then we'll go through load up through the load up. But I just want to explain some of the concepts that I use first. I'm going to use this MFD down in the bottom left to manage weapons. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we have our power management triangle on this one. We have our shields on this one. This one pops up for comms all the time when you're fighting, so that gets annoying, so we don't want to use that one. So we're going to use this bottom left one to manage our weapons. So we'll use this as a quick overview of what I've set up here. So. 
if you look at the trigger on my stick, it's triggering, first stage is actually triggering weapon group two because that's sort of how a lot of the ships are set up. They're sort of set up funny like that if you're using a dual stage trigger. So that's gonna activate, in this case, the GVSRs. Stage two activates the Gatling as well. Um, for the index hat on the Alpha, if I push it forward, it'll change the gimbal mode. We don't have a gimbal equipped right now, so it's not going to do anything. If I push it in, it'll change the pip type from lag to lead. I find that depending on your situation and your target, you might want to change the pip. And if I pull it towards me, it turns on and off stagger mode on the on the right there. Now we've got repeaters equipped on this particular loadout, so it doesn't really make much of a difference, but it makes a big difference for cannons. It almost makes that cluster of cannons on the front of the Vanguard operate as if it was a giant Gatling. The other thing I've set up is I have this toggle switch here, and I've set up through Joystick Gremlin. Invert weapon groups. To invert the weapon groups. So now, if I'm changing ships or changing loadouts, I don't have to manually configure what group is on which part of the trigger. So now if I squeeze the first stage of the trigger, it's inverted. So now it's firing the Gatling first, and then the repeaters. And if I flip the switch back, we're back to the original non-inverted configuration. So sometimes, depending on your loadout and depending on your ship, you might want one to be the other, or vice versa. So it doesn't actually enumerate the weapon groups differently. So it doesn't actually flip the what's in one group to another. It's just changing which keybind is being sent when the trigger is on first stage and second stage. One thing that you can do is when you're using a loadout like this where we have repeaters at 1400 meters per second and the AD5B at 700 meters per second, when they're both on, the targeting pip is going to use the slowest weapon and then it's going to sort of aim assist the other weapon to sort of make them intercept at the right point. So you don't lose any velocity on the laser repeaters in this situation, but it does make aiming potentially twice as hard because the pip deflection is magnified twice the amount, if that makes sense. So one thing you can do is we can actually disable the weapon group. So if you watch the pip, as you get close, I'll toggle it on and off, and you can see that it actually is affecting the aim point. Make it a little bit easier to demonstrate. So there it is aiming for 700 meters. There it is for 1400 meters per second velocity. So key thing is is DPS is not applied to DPS. So that gives you an option of not only equipping not only equipping a weapon that has a higher velocity when you need it, but also allows you to have a weapon with lower velocity which has a higher damage output. So you can choose targets based off of enabling and disabling those weapon groups. The only thing is, is there's no keybind to do it, so you have to manage it through the MFD. So, so it does take a little bit of time, but most of the time, you'll pick up the radar signature of something that's large enough to warrant turning that on and off early enough to know if you're going to need it or not. So, All right, so since we have this loaded already equipped, we're just going to use it. Again, we're going to keep in mind the sort of flexibility that we have in enabling and disabling the weapon groups to sort of best fit 
our target. And I think because of that, this is one of the more versatile loadouts in the Vanguard, simply because even with the AD-5B powered, it doesn't draw from the repeater capacitor either. Downside, of course, it is using ammunition, but there's always trade-offs. So we're dealing with a Vanguard here. So I'm just gonna go and enable the Gatling. And again, you can kind of see the pip shift back and forth as the weapon is enabled and disabled, showing how the velocity of the weapons affects the aim point. All right, so we've dealt with that one. Generally, when it comes to the bounties in atmosphere with the Vanguard as well, like that was kind of a stupid thing that I did. It's not the smartest play, but I also wanted to kind of cut through them as fast as possible. Generally, you don't want to be so low because your movement speed in atmosphere in the Vanguard is not great. But I'm not going to bother with those guys because it's not too efficient to clean them up. Especially when we're running ballistics ammo. We want to move on to another bounty basically as quick as possible. Yeah, they're very angry. <laughs> Is we'll do one VHRT. And then maybe we can do one ERT. We don't really need to deal with the lower tier bounties because it doesn't make a lot of a difference. In the lower tier bounties, you're having targets that are moving faster. You're either going to want to put repeaters on them to help manage those targets anyway, or you're gonna be in a lighter ship because you're just starting out and you haven't earned money to unlock a Vanguard, so I don't really see a lot of point in covering them. Uh, ERT. Okay, so let's do ERT. And yeah, we'll just use the same loadout for a VHRT and an ERT and we will... Again, this one is not going to be as... not going to be that efficient. But one thing we can kind of use it to do is to demonstrate the, again, the toggling of weapon groups and it's one thing for some person on the internet to tell you use this that and the other thing it's another thing to kind of refresh my own experience on all of these and then let somebody vicariously live that experience if that makes any sense so for this one, what I think we're going to do is we're going to start off with the AD-5B off. And we're going to concentrate on taking out the escort ships for the hammerhead first. Just to try to limit the amount of damage and directions that that damage can come in on us. And then we will turn on the AD-5B in the middle of combat as we go after the hammerhead or as we go after some tougher uh, escort ships. It's probably going to be Hurricanes, Vanguards, and Valkyries because that's what most frequently spawns in these things. And I would say all but the Hurricane, you could probably make good use of the Ballistic Gatling on the Vanguard against. The Hurricane, 
Hurricanes are pretty tough. NPC ones are anyway, because they just seem to be super tough. And they're also pretty small for their overall amount of toughness. Yes, Hurricanes, Vanguards, and Valkyries. Oh my. A nice reference, I like it. So, I'm not going to go straight in. I'm sort of going to fly over the top here. Just because we want to try to separate things out. We can pull the escorts away from the hammerhead. We can deal with the escorts. And then we don't have to worry about so much firepower coming directly at us. So, yeah, there's a hurricane. There's a Valkyrie. So... The hurricane is probably going to be what we want to try to take out first, simply because it's going to be able to chase us. They're pretty close to the ground, based on the altimeter. So here comes the hurricane. I'm just going to pump power to weapons here to be a little bit more efficient with dealing with them. Actually, surprisingly, that Valkyrie chased a lot harder than the Hurricane did. That's okay. We got a Gatling for him. And let's turn it back off. So that allows us to use the faster velocity more efficiently with those weapons. And then we can turn it back on. And we can use it to attack the hammerhead. Oh, hello! Oh, there's a raid! Oh my god! Welcome! So I'm going to switch to lag pip for the hammerhead, simply because it's a much larger target. I'm trying to target the aft turrets. There's two options really when you're dealing with these guys in atmosphere, it's the aft turrets or the engines. The engines, because you can cause them to crash. The aft turrets, because there is a shield hole there. This server seems to be actually pretty good, so the hammerhead's actually fairly updating quickly. You can kind of tell. Well, thank you. I'm 
glad you liked it. Yeah, this server must be super fresh because that hammerhead is doing way better than they normally do. It doesn't seem to really want to follow too good either. now we have a little bit more freedom of movement basically orbit him now. Okay, so again, that's loadout's not really the most efficient for that, but it definitely works. Uh, he basically froze up. I don't think I hit I don't think I hit the engines, but one thing that I, I've noticed with the hammerheads is once they've sustained a little bit of damage, they seem to go pretty dead regardless of where that damage comes from. And I don't know if it's because ballistic weapons are somehow hitting the components. I don't think they should be because I don't think like the penetration of bullets is currently a thing, but I've noticed that once hammerheads start to take a little bit of damage, they seem to go pretty dumb. So I think next we might look at the alternative ballistics option to the AD-5B. Because the AD-5B is, well, it's pretty much best in slot. Uh, let's see. The other ballistic weapon that we can use is the deadbolt. I've had a few people mention to me that the deadbolt can somehow deal additional damage outside of what is listed in terms of the weapon damage calculator websites. But I've never been able to definitively see that myself. So maybe I just don't know what I'm looking for. But that's okay. We're going to try it again here anyway. Um, I'm also going to put two MVSAs and two EVSDs on. And we're going to use the distortion to disable targets. A lot of bounties are in atmosphere now. Disabling them in atmosphere could be... 
a valid option. Okay, so Deadbolt 5. I actually think the Deadbolt 5 is one of the nicer looking weapons you can mount to a Vanguard simply because it's pretty compact for a size 5. So it doesn't look as, as ridiculous. Um, but we got the two MVSAs, two EVSDs on there as well. So I think we're going to keep the weapon groups as they are for this one. The other thing about distortion weapons is they're more efficient on the capacitor even though they don't do a lot of damage. So it extends how long you can fire the other weapons for. For example, if we would have had a full loadout of MVSAs, they only would get about 37 shots each. Here they're getting 47 shots for the two that we do have. Distortion weapons can still damage shields, but they don't do any damage to the hull. But they can disable components, and they have an explosion radius as well, so... It's pretty common to hit multiple components on smaller ships with distortion and disable them. So let's do the same thing as before. We will do... There's the hidden VHRT. The one that shows us the HRT. We'll, we'll do a VHRT, and we'll do an ERT, and we'll just play around with it and see how it see how it goes. What I find with smaller cannons, um, you know, like the kind of cannons that we have on the nose of the Vanguard, they don't really have the capability of sort of maximizing that alpha damage input like some of the larger cannons would. So it's almost always a good idea to put them in staggered. So that's what we will do here. So we'll enable that staggered fire mode so they fire staggered like that. But you can kind of see how when we enable the stagger mode there, it basically turns... When you have all cannons equipped on the front, it basically turns those four guns into one giant repeater. Although, given that they're cannons, they'll only be 700 meters per second velocity. Alright, let's see what we're dealing with here. F7C Hornet, Cutlass Black... Vanguard Warden. Also got a Buccaneer. Buccaneer will be the hardest one to kill with this loadout simply because of the lower velocity. Really not seeing a whole lot of disabling effect from those cannons. Those distortion cannons, I mean. Well, maybe. It's a little hard to tell sometimes with the NPCs because you're not sure if the AI is just being derpy or if it's actually an issue with their power.
Let's try the deadbolt. That does quite a bit of damage per hit. I'm not sure timing that out and just spraying with the Gatling. I'm not sure that there's actually a difference there. Like some people say, the deadbolt does the extra damage, but again, I've never really seen it, even in trying to count like ammo duration and an equivalent number of bullets from the Gatling compared to the compared to the deadbolt. That guy was behind us and he hit us. Wow. I'm trying to watch his EM signature as I hit him with the distortions to see if there's any change in terms of power output. But that's hard because the weapons are also going to throw that off too. And the damn comms thing pops up on the MFD. Actually, that might have just disabled them there. Yeah, his EM is basically nil right now. So yeah, okay, they do disable. He's only at... Yeah, he's in the tens for EM. So he's, he's just tumbling right now. He's been completely shut down. His EM signature is zero. Maybe we can get him to impact. Yep. Okay, so they do work. They do disable. Good to know. <laughs> All right, let's take on the ERT. Um, it's based on the components that they have, or it should be anyway. Um, every component has an amount of damage that the distortion weapon can do, or that the distortion that the amount of distortion damage it can take until it shuts down, and then it has a reset time. But, I mean, basically if you've disabled them and you're constantly applying distortion damage, they'll never, they'll never come back up. They'll continually be disabled. So we'll just do the same thing with this one. We'll disable or take out some of the escorts. That way we're not getting fired on from many different directions if possible. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, coupled versus decoupled. It was like flight assist on versus flight assist off in Elite.
Yeah, actually, we just disabled that hurricane. His EM signature is just toast. Oh, he regained power just before he hit. Well, that's one way to deal with hurricanes. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe keeping a couple of these distortions on when you're doing these atmospheric bounties is just fantastic. Yeah, that hammer or that uh, Vanguard. I'm just watching his EM signature right now. He's got like no EM signature. He's just floating there. Yeah, he just powered back up. You can see he's starting to move again. Yeah, I think uh, I think keeping a couple of distortions on is a good uh, is a good move. At least for doing dealing with these bounties. All right, and we'll start to apply the deadbolt five here on the hammerhead as well. When we're shooting at this guy. Actually, that ground facility there is shooting the hammerhead too, I think. He's having trouble getting up. That was fairly quick, wasn't it? I have to say this is a pretty good loadout for dealing with a lot of stuff in the atmosphere. It's hard to say how much the that made a difference. I think just based off of the fact that the uh, having the two distortions and the two cannons that kind of offsets the cannon damage so I do think the deadbolt actually did do some additional damage there uh, although the facility turret did seem to be shooting at that hammerhead I don't think it would make up for the difference that we saw in ammo so I think the deadbolt really does do a little bit extra damage it's gonna have to be further investigated so because we're going to put the CVSAs on too, let me just double check that that's saved. And we're going to put them in stagger. It's like, it's going to be like having two Gatlings. Just that one of them will run out of ammo a little bit faster. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing as last time. Do one VHRT and one ERT. So we got the four... CVSA cannons and the 85B ballistic gatling on the Vanguard. That's going to be a lot of DACA. 
After about a minute of full DACA, we'll lose about half of our DPS, and then we'll have about a minute of DACA after that. So we're gonna make sure that the, we're gonna pull back on that index hat. We're gonna make sure that stagger mode is on for the CVSAs so they'll act like a pseudo Gatling when they're all combined together. And let's grab us a VHRT. Uh, again, they're mislabeled around Microtech, so there's our VHRT. I think what I'm going to do is I want the AD-5B to be the weapon that I'm using to walk in the other cannons. So I'm going to invert the weapon groups. Invert weapon groups. That way the first stage of the trigger will trigger the Gatling the actual Gatling Gatling. And that way we can use the second stage of the trigger once the fire is on target to supplement that DPS with the CVSAs. That's just because the CVSAs are going to have less ammunition to use. If that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's see what we're up against here. Oh, uh, it's not so bad given their firing rate because it still gives you about a minute of sustained fire. Um, the BRVS for the Vanguard is only gives you about 16 seconds. <laughs> it doesn't really offer enough to compensate in my opinion. So we're just doing a quick weapons check. Yeah, the inverted weapon is working. So we have the 85B as stage one. We got the CVSAs as stage two. All right, let's see what we can do. Yeah, that shred's pretty good. Putting them in stagger mode definitely feels nice. What's nice with the loadout like this is you don't even have to worry about, uh, you don't have to really worry about power to weapons. Yeah, I think that's the way to use it. Use the Gatling to walk in the fire for the CVSAs.
All right, let's try an ERT now. We won't reload because we never did before. I don't know if we'll be able to kill it without the reload though, but we'll find out. Given that there's not much damage difference per second on the CVSAs versus the MVSAs, I think you're probably better just going with the MVSAs because I can't think of a use where you'd want to have the CVSAs and something else on the nose. Because you either want that deadbolt or you either want or you either want the uh, 85B, because there's just not a, just not too many other combinations you can really do there. And we might not, uh, we might not even have enough ammo without reloading here to finish this one, so we'll see. Two hurricanes, that's a, that's a bad one. But we'll see what we can do. We'll try to deal with those first. What we saw using distortion on the hurricanes seemed to work the best. The other problem with the AD5B is it uh, has a lot of spread and fixed assist doesn't work all that great on it. So hitting things like Hurricanes is not the most fun. We're burning ammo real, really too fast because we don't really have any other options but to burn ammo. Well, we can try. I doubt we'll do it, but we'll try.
you can see how much longer the Gatling can fire than those CVSAs. It kind of makes the CVSAs pointless if you're trying to put something for ballistic overall in your loadout. We do not have enough. If we if we reloaded, we might have. But you don't want to reload every single time, for efficiency reasons. So, yeah, I think doing the same thing except with the MVSAs is really the best option. Now, if those wouldn't have been hurricanes, we might have been able to get away with it. Yeah, because like you, you combine, you combine all the four CVSAs, they get about the same DPS that the AD5B does, but the AD5B fires for twice as long. So there's not much point to those weapons because you're not going to want to put like the CVSAs on as a ballistic weapon and then say put a laser cannon in the size 5 because having the four MVSAs does more damage per second than the laser cannon does and having the 85B it does more damage than the laser cannon does too so that basically really narrows down your choices there. There's not any good option other than Deadbolt or AD5B. Unless you're going repeaters. But then again, you can do the trick where you flip things on and off. Yeah, there's not uh, not a ton of great options. You can do all ca all energy cannons so that you don't have to worry about ammo. Yeah, so going straight ballistic with those guys is not the greatest option. And we already know the BRVS ballistic repeaters only get a quarter of the firing time that those do. So that's kind of useless. Honestly, I feel like I, I feel like testing a lot of this stuff is not that surprising. I feel like I probably could have just skip some of those and gone right to the more obvious options. So what you could do is you could do an M7A and you could do full MVSA cannons and not worry about ammo at all. You could do you could do the M7A plus you could do the trick where you do the repeaters and you toggle the weapon groups. Actually, you know what? Since we know what distortion is like, what if we combine those ideas, put the M7A on the nose, put the distortion repeaters here, or should we put the M7A to give us flexibility and damage output? Yeah, let's do the M7A to give us the flexibility of the damage output, because we can always disable it if required. Most of the options in trying to get some flexibility out of the loadout is sort of wasted other than like I said I'm going with those 85B Gatlings or the deadbolt so yeah this one we got the laser repeaters distortion repeaters and M7A and we're gonna do the same weapon group trick on the M7A that we did before so once again we will use the bottom left MFD to do that because we don't want it to be disrupted by the comms the only thing I think with using distortion repeaters instead of cannons is controlling the overall thing without enabling and disabling further weapons to try to pick it apart with distortion is not going to be as effective as what we did with the cannon. I think I will stagger on this weapon grouping as well because just because the distortion repeaters and the laser repeaters inherently have different firing rates to begin with, so we'll see if that results in a steadier stream of fire.
certainly get a lot of sustained. Alright, comms, you gotta go away so I can see their EM signatures. Yeah, that disabled him. See his EM signature is dropping to nothing right now. Yep, his is dropping too. So yeah, that, that is effective, even with repeaters. Let's turn the cannon back on to deal with that, I think it was a cutlass. Oh, no, there's another Buccaneer. Okay, never mind. Well, we'll leave the cannon on anyway, and we'll shoot him. That shreds pretty quickly. Actually, this has some potential. This has some potential. Let's do the ERT with it. We're doing the same trick that we used to enable and disable the cannon as needed to optimize the different weapon groups. And I was able to disable ships with the distortion repeaters too, so... I'm definitely feeling that having at least one distortion weapon in the loadout is of great benefit. The DPS falls a little bit, but being able to disable the ship really makes up for it. Not to mention it being a little bit more efficient on the capacitor overall, which means yeah, you're losing some DPS, but you're gaining a lot more sustain. So, you know, trade-offs as usual. But I think sacrificing a tiny bit of DPS to add a little bit of distortion, I feel like that makes a fair bit of difference. Anyway, we will take out these escorts with the cannon disabled, maybe. and We'll see what we're up against, and we'll decide whether or not we want to enable the cannon. Uh, what do we got? There's a Hammerhead, Valkyrie, Hammerhead, Valkyrie... There's three signatures that popped up, so the other one's probably small, which means it's probably a Hurricane. So, we might leave that disabled for the moment. Yeah, there's the Hurricane. Yeah, so we'll leave that disabled for the moment, uh, just to kind of deal with the Hurricane. And then we'll enable the Cannon again to take out the Valkyrie and the Hammerhead. Yeah, in, in that one burst, we actually already disabled that hurricane.
that makes those hurricanes a lot easier to deal with. So let's enable the cannon again for the Valkyrie, since we probably going to want the extra DPS. Based on our previous testing, the Valkyries didn't 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 it didn't really help to have the distortion against the Valkyries previously. Oops, I guess we need powered weapons. So yeah, having that there to deal with the Valkyries, that seems pretty efficient. I think I think we found a pretty versatile loadout here, actually. And one that doesn't really rely on ammo, so... This seems to be able, capable of taking on all kinds of different targets. It disables the hurricanes quickly. It has DPS to deal with the Valkyries. What I like about having the cannon here is you can let one weapon group deal damage while the other one recharges. I have to say, the server that we've been on today, the AI has been really reactive compared to normal. Normally you can just orbit them like that. Yeah, having the ballistics really helps with the hammerhead based on what we've tested. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, they seem particularly reactive today too. probably the most I've seen in this patch. Maybe it's because Invictus is over and the servers aren't being hammered all to hell now. But yeah, that... I think for VHRTs that, that, would, that would actually work really good. I don't think I'd use it on hammerheads. I th Based on everything we've seen, you really need to have something... You really need to have the extra burst of DPS that the ballistic weapons will give you in order to really take those out. I mean, yeah, you can use torpedoes or whatever, but that's not really the point of what we're currently looking at. Yeah, I want to try one more option. I know based on what we've tested so far, it's just, just not going to be great for killing ERTs, but I kind of want to try it on, I want to try it on the VHRTs. I suppose the other thing that we could do is dive into testing the deadbolt a little bit further, but I think that's going to require an actual second person to really get into that one. Because I think it's just too unreliable shooting at NPC ships. I think you just need to take a couple of stationary targets, a couple of stationary weapons, and actually work that one out. So I think the last two things we're going to try is we're going to try swapping out that cannon for the repeater.
and blowing up VHRT. And then I think we're going to try the same thing, but with cannons. Like, with a lot of this weapon changes that they made, you know, one of the goals they said is they, they wanted people not to use monolithic loadouts, you know, where everything's laser cannon, everything's whatever. But it just kind of pushed everybody into, you know, all laser repeaters, all laser cannons, or, you know, for the most part, it sort of had the opposite effect as what they intended, or at least what they said they were going for. Honestly, the Vanguard is one of the exceptions to those rules just because of the size 5 mount and a couple of the size 5 weapons right now, but a lot of the other ballistic weapons, it's made people not use them. But from what we're seeing, it looks like distortion, at the very least, does seem to have some merit in including at least one gun. So, same thing as before, laser repeater, distortion repeater, size 4 repeater is the difference there. Because there's no point in size 5 repeaters. That's the other thing. I wish we had a size 5 repeater that was worth using. Because you give up like 700 DPS and you give up velocity, so you... There's no trade-off for the repeater versus a size 5 cannon. About the only thing I could possibly see is it's a little bit easier to walk your fire in using a repeater, but... I don't think that's enough to make up for those deficiencies. Because it's, it's DPS on paper, and then there's applied DPS. Because when you can put the size 4 on, be more efficient on the, on the uh, capacitor, and get higher velocity, there's not really much of a point. Like, going from a size 4 cannon to a size 5 cannon is like... 1100 DPS difference, whereas it's like 400 DPS difference with cannons, if I have my numbers right. Alright, so we will try this here. And we'll stagger it, why the hell not? Yeah, that seems to be the way to deal with hurricanes, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's shut down like already. He's he's falling. Yeah, Vanguard has already lost power too. Okay, so it's quite definitive at this point. Adding a bit of distortion to the loadout helps you rip through those a lot quicker. Just don't use it against just don't use just don't use the repeaters against hammerheads. 
yeah, distortion, distortion, definitely, definitely is a boost. Especially if they're in atmosphere, because then they just start falling. So I think one more that I want to try is basically the same thing as this loadout, but with cannons. That will give us an infinite ammo variant, potentially that is capable of also handling hammerheads. But the only thing is, is I found, well, we'll have to see. I, I just don't think it's as easy to disable hammerheads with distortion guns because the components are so spread out. Like on a, on a fighter, you can pretty much disable everything simultaneously because all the components are really close. And I mean, distortion guns with their seven and a half meter explosion radius pretty much covers the entire fighter wherever they hit, so. It's basically knocking everything out at the same time. Whereas a larger ship, not really doing that. They're much further spread out. But, to be thorough, we'll try it. Basically the same thing. We'll keep two energy cannons. We'll keep two distortion cannons. And we'll do the M7A. So, no ammo to worry about. At least no ammo, ballistics ammo to worry about. Honestly, we might be even be able to get away with one distortion weapon, but that throws off the symmetry. Don't like throwing off symmetry. But yeah, two two distortion cannons, two laser cannons, and great big old laser cannon for the size five. Valkyrie, Cutlass Black, Gladius, F7C. Pick this guy off. It's a little bit harder to hit the faster targets without repeaters. But given how many are in atmosphere these days, it's a lot easier to manage. And that loadout just completely trounces the Valkyries. As long as it can handle, as long as it can handle a hammerhead, I think, I think this might be one of the best 
loadouts for just going out there and staying out there and chaining as many things together as you possibly can. Yeah, exactly. What Valkyrie, indeed. But yeah, I... The only thing I think we can say definitively there, then, is... Including at least some distortion in the loadout seems to make a big difference. Or at least seems to make some difference. But I think the only way that you're going to... Especially if the server is acting well and the AI is acting well... I think the only way that you're going to be able to reliably kill those hammerheads is by including some ballistic weapon of some sort. Because I think otherwise you're just losing out on sustained damage due to the capacitor by having all energy. You're losing out on not being able to have any shield penetration. Kind of figured that would be the case, but... And even, even then, from that perspective, you don't really want to do that because then you're not chaining them together because I'm guessing by the time you account for reloading and by the time you account for or repairs or whatever have you by including that ballistic loadout, you'd be better off just chaining the VHRTs together for the difference in what it would cost you. Anyway, I think I'm going to have to stop for now because I am way over past getting some food. So I'm going to go do that. Maybe I'll see what I can make out of what we played around with today, too. Anyway, guys, you guys have a good one. And we'll catch you next time. Good, I'm glad.